Hey, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to Steampunk Power Ups. Today we are talking about a Mario Kart spreadsheet tag teamed with a Google form that I made. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, first off, uh, this project was built on the back of my boss battle spreadsheet. I run a gamified classroom, right? So there's a lot of different elements that I incorporate into that spreadsheet. Um, so I just want to make you aware that those things are there. When I give the copy link for this though, uh, they will all be hidden because really to run a regular Mario Kart uh, game, you don't need any of those elements. Those are just for, uh, for if I had to do a boss battle, it wants to have some dice mechanics to it, right? So these are my dice sheets, which uh, on, on another version of this Mario Kart sheet, I'll probably use to add uh, the power-ups, right? Or, um, or if, you know, I have items in my classroom for, for those, right? I'll, uh, I have a place for that, right? So it's kind of got all these different components or character skills, right? So it's got all these different components that um, do, do not have to be used uh, and uh, that I, I didn't use the first time I ran this Mario Kart game. Um, it's got like the regular boss page because again, this is built on my, my boss battle spreadsheet, right? Uh, it's got a, another one on here that I did that was a labyrinth, right? So there's, there's lots of things there, but when you go to make a copy of this, uh, what you should see is the page that says Mario circuit and one that says settings. Okay. So all the rest I will have hidden for you automatically, but I just wanted to let you know all those other ones are there. Those again are just for, um, just other, other boss battles, other things that you can do. Um, so if you want to know more about those, you can check. Uh, I've got a couple other videos about boss battles using this same sheet. You can watch those. I'll probably put cards to those at the end of this video. So you'll need this. Once you open it up, it'll have these two, these two tabs for you. Um, and then what you're going to need is also a uh, a Google form. Now the Google form that I used for this one was a review that one of my colleagues made, and it was just a regular math review, uh, with, with the quiz setting on the Google form. And the only thing that I did to, to spice it up was to put a, a Mario Kart banner on there, uh, and to, to add some Mario Kart music. Okay. And, uh, and so that is, um, what, what I did, uh, what I'll provide for you. If you want to have that same banner, is I'll, I'll, I'll use a little, just a simple sample form for that today. And I'll share a share link for this for you as well. So if you want to make a copy of this and use this as a base for whatever, um, assignment or quiz or review that you want to do, you can totally do that. Um, so you'll need a, a Google form. You'll need to set it up. You'll need to put all your questions in whatever your content is. Um, and it will need to be in quiz mode. So if you don't know how to do quiz mode, you'll go to settings here, you'll go to quizzes, right? And you'll go to quick, make it a quiz. Uh, and then you can do whatever settings that you want in terms of getting the feedback right away. Uh, what I did is uh, I had this open so that students could do it multiple times so that they could improve their score. Um, and so whatever settings you prefer to do on, on, on a quiz, you can do that uh, if you've done quizzes on Google form before. Okay, so once you have your quiz all set up, what you're gonna want to do is uh, go to the responses page and you're gonna want to open up the spreadsheet for it. I haven't done it before, so uh, for this new sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sheet here for you. And what this will give you is all of your responses for your, for your quiz. Uh, so then what you're gonna do is this URL in the top here, you're gonna take that and you're going to paste it right here into on this sheet where it says response sheet link. Now this is my settings page for my boss battle control center. Like I said, most of these settings we're not going to use for the Mario Kart game here. Um, but there's, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of things that you can do here. So you're going to, uh, if you notice here, all of these blue boxes, those are the ones that have uh, numbers that you can change and settings that you can change and all of that. So you, what you're gonna do, that, that link that you copied here from the top, we're gonna put that right here where it says response sheet link, just like that. And that's gonna connect your Google form to this game. And then it's gonna want permission to connect to that, to that sheet here. This sheet gives you all of your answers and data from your students from the Google form. Uh, and, and 
So by taking that link and putting it right in there, I've connected these together. Now, uh, in terms of the settings for this, right, I've got a few different settings. Now, I only put one question on this, right? I put one question here that has that has one point on it, right? So for, for my settings here, I'm going to change my possible points in the assignment to one point, which is kind of silly. Normally, you don't want to do points that low. Uh, and I'm going to put my number of players as four since I am going to fill this out uh, to show you how it would work. Um, and then my percentage average to victory, I'm going to say a 70% I want. Uh, for the percentage average for defeat, that doesn't actually really apply for uh, the race that we're going to do. And the health bar max and all that doesn't really apply. And then like all this other stuff, like the dice way, added health for the boss, all that fun stuff, that only applies for a boss battle. And then notice here there's also these controls to turn on or off the settings for, you know, attack and agility and all that stuff. That's all the extra stuff that we already hit. I put ends on all of those to turn all of that off. And then the piece that we really want to be aware of right here is down here at the bottom. This is really what we're going to be using is the race game stats. So this puts our progress bars out of 100, right? And I've got this one turned off here too as well, okay? So uh, so what I want to do, I've got points in assessment one, number of players four. I think that's good. And now what we should see here is we've got Mario and Bowser all ready to uh, to race, okay? And actually, this is where we can kind of kind of get fun here. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so maybe you can see it a little bit better. And you might have to do this when you go to display this on your whiteboard or whatever on your with your projector. Um, you might have to zoom out a little bit to get it to all to show right. Um, and you can see here I've got my race course. But something that's kind of fun, I, I built in this functionality here so you can actually pick which player you want to drive. So maybe you've got a, you've got a thing for Koopa Troopa right? You can, can put him in there. Or maybe you got a thing for, for you want to race against Peach, right? You can put her in there. So this first player here, that would be the student's cart that as they put their answers in on the form, we'll move that cart forward. And this second player, that's a, it's like an NPC, or it's a non-player character, and it will move on in response to, to this player moving forward. And the way that I make all this work is hidden right below here. And that is that I have all of the images of all of the different angles for, uh, for each character, right? And then I've got these two columns. And when I change uh, one of these dropdown options, right, it will move those angled characters over here so that as we go, really all that's going on here is I've got these little cells that are conditioned where it says if equals nine, right? If this number equals nine, which is counting based on student responses, then put this picture in there, right? And I went through and I put every number in up to a hundred and I did it for both of them. It took a while, but this was kind of a, just a fun side project. It wasn't something that I had any sort of time frame on. Um, and, and, uh, and so now it's a fun thing that I have and now that you have as well. So I saved you the work. So if you want to, um, to make this any sort of different kind of race, you can do the same thing, put the images for whatever characters or players you want in here. All you would need to do is change the names along here and that would change your drop down, and put your image links in here and that would change your images. Okay. Um, so that's just a little, little two cents about that. I'm going to hide that again. If you want to look at it, you can, but I'm just going to hide it for now because it looks nice and pretty otherwise. So the only other thing that I would say that we want to look out for here is your threshold to victory, right? And this basically is telling us how close the race is. I think when I originally did this, I had it set at 2%, right? Super close, right? But, um, then to, when I, when I did it for the first time with my students, I put it at 10%, right? So basically this is like how close the, um, the boss character is next to, to, to your student's character that you picked. And once you've got all your settings all figured out here on your settings page, you can hide that, right? So then you just have one sheet that your students will be able to see, right? And you can post this on Google Classroom for them to view, or you can just put it up on your projector, right? I do both of those things right now since I'm hybrid. Um, maybe you are too, okay? So now that I think we've got all our settings, let's go Yoshi against Peach. And I think I'm happy with my settings. I think I'll do, I don't know, why not? Let's try, let's try something that's 5%, all right? Let's go ahead and do a practice one. So I'm gonna hide this one now. I think all our settings are good. I think all my characters are good. And I'm just gonna fill out this Google form once and see what we come up with. So let's see who, um, oh, so actually to fill it out, I need to do it over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out once, 
see what we come up with. As a student, if I wanted to, I could hit play here and play my music, right? Or uh, in for my in-class. So that's kind of more for my online students. For my in-classroom students, I just pull up YouTube and I put the music on myself. So let's go ahead and put our, our characters in here or our name in here. So let's go ahead and put Mario Mario here. Uh, and then I, I just did one question just to practice, right? And I'll hit submit. And what we should see right away uh, is we should see that response come in here and got one out of one, right? And what we should see here, uh, because I only put it out of four points, um, you know, uh, and I put four characters, we can see it moved them quite far down the track. Uh, and we can see that progress being made there by the drivers. Um, now, one more piece here. If I wanted to change my character mid game, I could do that, right? Or, um, if I wanted to adjust my, if I wanted to adjust my settings mid game, I could do that, right? I could, could go back in here to my hidden sheets and I could open up my settings. And I did this quite a lot because having the right number of players, just depending on how you want to play it is different, right? If, it, if I was doing an assessment, I'd probably do the same number of players that are in my class, right? If I've got 15 kids in my class that day, I put it out of 15, but this is a review and I wanted them to have the opportunity to go back and have an iterative process and to do it again. So uh, what I did was I made it like 10 or five plus whatever the number of students were. Um, so, and you can see here, if I, if I change this number to like, uh, to, to 10 students here, right. To, to 10, right. Then I wouldn't have as much progress here. We would be just starting the race here. And if you notice there, um, if I changed like the, if I changed the victory threshold, right. Increase that victory threshold a little bit, make it a little bit, uh, different, right. That should result in, uh, you know, I, maybe would have to. Maybe I have to increase it a lot. Let's see here. I'm going to set it up to 20. Let's see what happens. No, I'm not making any difference right now. Uh, and that's probably because um, it's such a, a small number of points in the assessment uh, that can kind of throw things off. Normally, you wouldn't have one point in the assessment. And really, it would probably be better to make your each question worth you know, three or four points. So you have a good set of data for, for the system to calculate. But otherwise, that is pretty much it. That is uh, kind of the, the generalities of this Mario Kart sheet. Uh, I hope you have fun playing Mario Kart with your students. Have a great day and uh, go out and make something awesome.